Hi everyone, I'm Assemblymember Rebecca bauer Cahan, and I'm here to announce our 2022 AD16 Woman of the Year. Reproductive justice is an absolute priority of mine as a legislator, as a woman, as a mom. And as we've seen over the last few years, reproductive rights are in a deeply precarious position in the courts and in legislatures across this country. California is and always will be a reproductive freedom state However, there's a lot we need to do to ensure that we are standing up for reproductive rights for women across this country. This year, I'm carrying AB 1666 to help protect patients, providers, and those who support them from the hostile laws limiting abortion in other states. But we have work to do here in California, and I am so proud to be in partnership with Planned Parenthood every day to make sure we're the meeting the needs of every person who needs access to comprehensive reproductive health care. You may be wondering why I'm talking about all of this, given I said that we were talking about Woman of the Year. Well, well our Woman of the Year does this every single day. Our Woman of the Year is Dr. Sarah Kennedy. Dr. Kennedy is the Chief Operating Officer and Chief Medical Officer at Planned Parenthood Northern California overseeing the healthcare delivered in Planned Parenthood and NorCal's 17 health centers. And Dr. Kennedy has been an incredible doctor throughout her career, focused on health equity. During her time at Planned Parenthood and NorCal, she spearheaded an effort with the California Department of Public Health and Planned Parenthood affiliates to prevent congenital syphilis. She's an advocate for legislative changes to keep our communities healthier. And during COVID, she oversaw the opening of the incredible new flagship for Planned Parenthood NorCal right here in the Bay Area in San Francisco. And of course, she's a member of our own Assembly District 16 community. Dr. Kennedy, I'm so grateful for all of your work. I want to thank you for that and for advancing reproductive justice and fighting for health equity. But I want to highlight before we turn to you that you don't do it alone. And we've talked a lot about this. You do it alongside incredible healthcare workers and the staff that support you every single day. So we are giving this award to you as our Woman of the Year, but we know we're doing it on behalf of the entire system of Planned Parenthood NorCal that provides this care so incredibly to the people who need it in our community. So thank you. Thank you so much, Assemblyperson. We, um, I am so grateful to be here. As we talked about offline, um, I feel almost uncomfortable to be the figurehead of this reward or award because it really belongs to um, the team members. I, I tell my team this almost every day that they are the um, single best team I have ever worked with and probably ever will work with in my life. Um, and I am incredibly grateful for the clinicians, the RHS, the physicians, the leadership who have shown up every day to serve our patients throughout Northern California. I'll say that that work isn't always easy. I mean, I know that right here in our backyard in Walnut Creek, we've seen how difficult it can be every day for people to walk into those clinics. And I know that sometimes that treatment goes home with all of you that work in our clinics. And so although the work you do is incredible, and I'm sure it's fulfilling to provide that comprehensive care to everybody who needs it, it's also hard. So I'm glad we could honor all of you. Thank you so much. Yeah, the, you know, in Walnut Creek in particular, we've seen really an uptick in, um, anti-healthcare protesters um, who are bullying and shouting and um, really just distracting from the care that we give every day um, to our patients. And I really, um, at this moment, want to take the opportunity to thank all of our patient escorts. We have a team of volunteer patient escorts who have been there almost every day throughout COVID to really help steer our patients um, and give them a sense of comfort as they're entering the building. And also to thank you and our counterparts um, for being there to help support um, the safety and the buffer zone that we're trying to get passed through the Walnut Creek City Council um, to help protect our patients and their safety. Yeah, huge amount of gratitude for all of those individuals from the people standing there every day to escort the patients to our Walnut Creek City Council who unanimously voted to put that buffer zone around and protect people who are accessing healthcare. Those people are going in just to get healthcare and they should be able to do it safely, but also with the dignity of not facing people um, saying things to them about their own life choices. So I appreciate the work that your team and the team at Planned Parenthood NorCal has put into that. You know, we passed last year the law at the state level to help um, bolster the protections for all of our reproductive health clinic workers, but we need our lo local level partners to do the same and Walnut Creek is absolutely stepping up. So 
huge gratitude to them for that. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. Will you tell us a little bit about how you got to Planned Parenthood NorCal and what the work there looks like for everyone? And on this one, I'm going to add something. So I spoke a lot about reproductive health care in my introduction, but I also want to talk a little bit about the gender affirming care y'all provide, because I mean, these are both issues that families across the country are struggling with, and you are doing all of these things. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so I'll talk a little bit just very briefly about how I got to where I am and then um, some of the important services that we offer that people may be surprised to hear that Planned Parenthood does every day. Um, so I am, um, by training, an obstetrician and gynecologist. I um, knew that I wanted to be uh, a physician from when I was somewhere young childhood. But as I was going through um, medical school, I even in those early days of patient care, I was growing frustrated with seeing um, so many problems that our patients were facing that I could be a, an amazing doctor for them in the moment, but the problems persisted and were really systemic. Um, there are problems that are related to social determinants of health, so um, housing, food security, racism that our patients experience every day. Um, and in, sometimes in the healthcare system. So um, I actually then um, went and got my master's in public health because I really have um, a, a, my broader interest is in the health of communities, especially the most vulnerable communities um, that we serve. Uh, did my OBGYN residency and then completed a fellowship in family planning, which is a specialty training in, for um, family planning and clinical research. Um, and that's when I went to a Highland Hospital and so worked largely with um, the very poor, the most vulnerable um, in our communities. I um, am also a, a trained forensic examiner for women seeking asylum and so did a lot of human rights work um, at Highland. Um, as part of my work, as part of healthcare that we deliver, I am an abortion provider and so I was also in charge of the um, aspiration clinic at Highland Hospital, which led me ultimately to Planned Parenthood um, to start doing some um, occasional work with Planned Parenthood in um, the area of abortion. And uh, so I became uh, chief medical officer about six years ago. And then about six months ago, I took on the dual role of chief operating officer. So now I'm officially in charge of all aspects of healthcare for our 17 health centers. And I, I love it. I love my job because I both get to see patients. I perform abortions. I also perform LEAP procedures for um, treating um, precancerous cells on the cervix, removing those cells so that a woman does not develop cervical cancer. Um, and I get to, to apply that public health and policy lens every day, really looking at with our large um, healthcare system, where can we make change for patients? Where can we move our organization um, and our patient communities towards health equity? So that brings us to equity and and what we, what, you know, the interest that we share, um, and that is really in the best interest of, of our community, that we are working to promote fair and just um, opportunities to access health care and for a person to be as healthy as they can be. And that, that means that they must have fair and just access to all kinds of health care, including abortion, reproductive health care, contraception, infertility, gender affirming hormone therapy. Um, and these are all services that we offer at PP NorCal. So we're very proud to, to really stand in that equity place. Um, we're trying very hard that every decision that we make at PP NorCal, every decision that I make, that we center that around health equity, knowing that, um, you know, especially in the time of COVID, the inequities and the disparities for the most vulnerable communities is only getting worse. That divide is getting larger. It is getting harder for folks to actually achieve health. Um, and that's what our organization is about, um, to, to stand with these patients and to help make that as easy as possible. Mm, I love that. And just this week, the governor signed into law um, Senator Gonzalez's bill, which makes um, the procedures you provide more affordable and accessible. So I know that, you know, every day we're looking at what makes healthcare more equitable. And yeah. um, there's so many barriers to access that we, even here in California, even in California, absolutely continue to work on. Yeah. So yeah. thank you for that leadership. It's so critical um, right now, given everything that's happening with the pandemic and um, recovery from it. And, um, you know, just access to healthcare generally is really not where I think any of us want it to be. And you guys are at the forefront of ensuring those in need of most are receiving it. 
Um, so, you know, I talk about reproductive justice a lot. It's something that we obviously in the Capitol are very focused on, but I think I would love for you to talk about what it means to you and what it means to the folks at PP NorCal. Well, I, you know, I, I think reproductive justice is, um, it is all about providing that just, that fair, that equal um, opportunity for reproductive health. And that when you think about healthcare as a human right, that abortion is a human right, contraception is a human right, being able to plan if and when and how um, you decide to have children is a human right. That's what we want for our people. Um, and that's what we want for, and, that, and that's, that's what makes our population healthier. You know, we know that people who have control over when and how and if they become pregnant or become parents, that those individuals are healthier. Um, uh, in our community, and that benefits everyone. So um, reproductive justice and health equity to me are non-negotiable when it comes to wanting to, to help people. Like that is, that is the, the most, one of the most basic human rights that people have is being able to, to plan if and when that they are going to um, have, have children. Yeah, no, I love that. And I think it's one of the things that we really try to highlight is the impact it has on gender equity, right? I yes. mean, we obviously fight hard to get to gender equity. We are not there and allowing women specifically who struggle and, um, you know, non-binary individuals in the form of equity to make those own, des their decisions for themselves is really critical absolutely. to get absolutely. into where we're Absolutely. I mean, there is absolutely no way that I would be where I am today if I didn't have um, that ability, if I hadn't had that ability to be able to choose when and how um, I became a mother and I love being a mom, but if it had happened earlier in my life, I would not be sitting here. And that's what we, we want that all people, whoever they are, we want them to be able to make that choice and to be able to control that for themselves. Right, yes, I couldn't agree more. And I love my children too, but they yeah. came at the moment I wanted them to come. Exactly, <laughs> no. and I feel very fortunate for that, right? Like that's, that it's, it is, um, it's very hard to know that that's, that is not the position that many people are in, but they do, do not have that control over their lives. So that's right. the reality. Well, thank you for giving people that important right, as you said. Right? Thank you for recognizing that. Supporting us. Um, okay, so I think everybody now gets why we are honoring you and your team today and the important work you do um, for, you know, incredible population in our community that needs your support and um, that we know will be better for it. Um, so thank you. And so for those that are watching, you know, you are a woman who's become a scientist, who is obviously thriving in her career and who I can tell loves what she does every day, which I think is what we also hope for all of our young girls and children. Do you have any advice for girls that are thinking of coming, going into science? Oh my gosh, please do it. We need more of you. Um, we need bright, awesome, ambitious scientists. Um, you know, I have three little human beings. My kids are uh, 12, 10, and six. And um, I don't think they're all going to be scientists, and that's okay. I would say for all kids listening right now um, that I think you can do what I try to tell my kids. You can do good in this world, and you can help people no matter what you go into. And I think you find the thing that you love, and then you apply that thing to make this world better. Um, and we would need that kind of passion in all careers, in all careers, right? So when I think about PP NorCal, we certainly have these extremely passionate, amazing um, frontline healthcare providers who have gone in with this deep sense of mission for healing people. Um, but our organization couldn't exist if we also didn't have the our accountants and finance team and our IT and computer technology team and our fundraising team and our educators. And these are all critical roles. And so you can apply whatever you are passionate about um, to do really good in this world. And I have a lot of faith that this next generation um, is, you know, these kids are inclusive and they are open and they are passionate and they are aware of the problems that, um, that people are facing. And so I think apply that to, to make this world better. Yeah, I love that. When people ask me, you know, if I want to be um, an assembly member one day, how do I get there? And I say, well, I, this wasn't my plan, but I've always 
followed my passions and done what I love okay. and I care deeply about. It. And I've, as a result, always been successful because it's so deep within me, the work I'm doing that I strive to do it as you know, well as I can. And I think that's the message to everybody, but don't let anyone stand in your way. No. What you're passionate about, somebody puts a barrier, you knock it over. Knock it over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So thank you so much, Dr. Kennedy. I am so grateful for you and our partnership um, and all the work you do in our community. And I know that, um, you know, I speak for everyone that I represent, that it just, we couldn't provide the incredible care that our community does oh. without the services that PP NorCal provides. So thank you so much. But thank, I want to thank you. I want to thank your entire team, whether it be the medical providers that show up every day to provide those services, the volunteers you mentioned who show up every day to support the supporters who keep your doors open um, and, you know, everyone in between, educators, the IT people, the people yeah. who clean the rooms after services are provided, exactly. all of those individuals make all the work you do possible. And we are so, so incredibly grateful. So thank you. Um, and thank you for being here. And thank you for just providing your passion to those that need it most. Thank you. Thank you so much for this honor. And thank you for anyone listening who's a supporter of Planned Parenthood. It, it really has made a difference. This has been a tough couple of years, tough couple of years for all human beings, but um, for people trying to provide reproductive health care to the very most vulnerable populations, we need your support. And I'm really deeply grateful for it. So thank you.